Oh, buddy, it's cold as ice. Man, this is brutal. Now, I want to talk about a comment from Richie Jacobs. He says, What does it mean when he says, I will give you according to your works? And my guess is this is in reference to Revelation 2. So let's sort of go through this. In Revelation 2, um, John is instructed to write unto the churches. And here in verse 2, I know thy works, and remember therefore whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. I know thy works. I know thy works. I know thy works. And, <clears throat> okay, here we go. Here's uh, the context of the question right there. So let's get into this. Let's uh, take a look at the context of it. And if we go up here, I think verse 20, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now, this is important. Verse 24, but, I, but unto you I say, <clears throat> excuse me, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you no, none other burden. <clears throat> okay? But that which ye have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now, first of all, I have to point this out. These are letters to churches, to peoples. This is not uh, like an individual, uh, a letter to an individual, okay? It's to many people, not just one person. And uh, I'm sure at some point I'll get into that later. Not in this video, but in this video, I just want to show that the according to your works, talking about those who are um, of the doctrine of the woman Jezebel. All right. Now, where is that verse at? There it is. As many as have not this doctrine. He's talking about a doctrine that's related to the woman Jezebel. And, um, and not the doctrine of Christ. So, uh, according to their works, um, I think it's important to understand that there are the works of darkness and then there's the works of light and the light is Jesus Christ so we have to make a distinction so how do we make that distinction well what are the works of God I think that's first and foremost um, let me think about what verse that is in John I thought there it is John's chapter 6 then said they unto him what shall we do that we might work 
the works of God. So what are the works of God? And then we can compare this to the works of evil, if you will, right? So, first of all, let's go to the, the verse here. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. All right, so the work that we do is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the work that those of Jezebel do are evil, right? These are evil works that they do. And what when God says, I will give unto every one of you according to your works, the evil works, well, what he's going to give them is death, all right? And <clears throat> that should be pretty apparent all throughout. We see in, when, law, when uh, Moses gives the law that uh, the punishment for such laws is death. Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. And so that's what they're going to get. All right. That's really all that means. Um, so, you know, let that be a warning to you if you, you know, are doing these things. And it was a warning for them, you know, if they are not in the doctrine of eternal security, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, which is everlasting life, which is all by faith. It's always been by faith. All right, it's not by your works. It's by the work that was done for you. And the work that we do is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all. Boy, so I hope that makes sense. All right, so the works that we do is to believe because Jesus did the works. The works that they do are the evil works. All right, the false doctrine, the fornication, the sacrificing to idols, and essentially they do not believe, they do not have faith, and they take pleasure in unrighteousness. Whereas we that are saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the work, the works of God. The work of God, I should say, huh? This is the work of God that you believe on Him whom He has sent. So that's essentially the difference. So it's important to understand the difference between their work and our work which is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ it's pretty you know it's really that simple but at the same time I, I keep repeating this that if you do not have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands how can you say you have faith in the Word of God which is in heaven so in order to have understanding and wisdom you have to have faith without faith you got nothing so it's it's about faith it's always been about faith and um, and of course these guys do not have faith and even unto this day when Moses is read the veil upon is upon their heart but when they shall turn to the Lord, nevertheless, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So how do you turn to the Lord? And that's by believing, by having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for you. See, it's always been about faith. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And just like Jesus says, 
If the Son of Man shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. So we are free. There is liberty. And it all is because of faith. You know, Jesus had faith. And we put our faith in his works. And, uh, you know, that's pretty simple, but I appreciate that that question because it is important. Uh, just because, simply because there's so many people out there teaching that you have to do something. Your, your, your uh, faith, you have to have works to prove your faith, right? I think we... Uh, they explain James they just live and die on the book of James and in nowhere in the book of James does it say you're saved by your works and or that you have to have works to prove that you're saved I mean what are you gonna prove to God that you're saved the whole premise of their argument is ridiculous even so if it hath not works is dead being alone okay and we could go over this um, but again you're not proving to God that you're saved because God's the one that chose you you don't choose God he chooses you right and so you know, if you have, you can't have a contradiction in the Bible. And you think about the two guys on the cross with Jesus. One of them believed, and the other one didn't. The one that believed, Jesus said, "This day you shall be with me in paradise." So, you know, in his view, when Jesus says that to him. When he says, today shalt thou be with me in paradise, that guy died that day. So to him, he's going to die and then wake up in paradise. Which is, uh, first the dead in Christ. The when, what moment is that? It's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Alright, so this is the essentially the beginning of paradise paradise if you will for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first all right so that's when this thief on the cross who accepted Jesus essentially on his deathbed believed and when he believed that's when God chose him that's when he was saved that's when he was born of God just as Jesus promised that whosoever believes in me shall never perish but have everlasting life he had everlasting life has everlasting life and then so to him it's gonna seem like an instant that he died and then he is rose up from the dead to meet the Lord in the air all right then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so, if you understand that, then you, then uh, this idea that you gotta have, you gotta prove your faith with works. Well, you have to ask the question: How did this guy? How did that guy prove he was saved when he was nailed to the cross? He couldn't move. He couldn't do nothing. Now think about this. People that are in wheelchairs, how are they going to prove that they're saved? They have a hard time getting around. It's not like everybody else or people that you know are amputated it's not as easy for them to go do things to help others to prove that they have faith in God so they what they're at a disadvantage that's that's not fair right? that's 
that's not equal no and that's not right or people that are poor think about poor people how are they going to go out and help people when they don't have near as much money as rich people you think of um, you know uh, somebody like Donald Trump lots of money man this guy does more good in one day than you will ever do in your entire life in regards to helping out people in the world you can't compare to that so if it was based on your works and what you do to prove that you're saved then Donald Trump's got you a thousand times over but that's <laughs> that's not how it works okay that's not how it works so we go back to Revelation 2 and according to your works those works are evil and our works are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and again I guess I should circle back around and say that this is to the peoples all right so and it says he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nation so um, this is not an individual so in it you know somebody could twist this and say well if you keep my works to the end you'll be saved and there's probably people out there teaching well you must endure to the end to be saved um, thereby nullifying the death of Jesus Christ the offering that he made and so nullifies that and then all you have to, you don't even have to believe in Jesus you just have to be alive at the end of the world essentially that's what they're teaching he that you know endure to the end you'll be saved well that's not what Matthew 24 is talking about at all Matthew 24 enduring to the end is simply about there's going to be saved, people being saved all the way to the end it's going to be bad it's going to get worse and worse but people will still be getting saved not as many at the end certainly than at the beginning when Jesus first started his ministry all right so I think that's enough I hope hopefully that covers it pretty good and if you have any follow-ups please do ask that's a great question it really is and it's important to talk about and it's important to understand for sure because uh, what are the works of God well the works of God is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ